Jean, thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Mrs. Soderdahl, or Rachel, and I am the f one of the 4K teachers downstairs. My name is Mrs. Bongle, and I am one of I am one of the teachers downstairs. I do um, PK3 and PK4. And then we also have another 4K teacher as well downstairs. She's not here tonight, but her name is Mrs. Kohout. Um, and we just wanted to welcome you and thank you for coming. Um, you should have all grabbed your handbook because we're going to kind of go through your handbook as our um, presentation goes on. Um, I would just like to start with a prayer. So if you can put yourselves in the presence of God, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Gracious God, as the summer begins to fade, new possibilities lie on the horizon. Bless all of those who are beginning or returning to their roles as teachers, as well as those who lead and support them in their efforts. May this school year be a time of grace as they teach, share, and challenge others to grow in faith, knowledge, and wisdom. Bless children along with their parents as they begin a new school year. May their minds be open to learning and to the wonder of discovery and insight. Be with us all as we embark on this new year. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. All right, so we start with philosophy. So in our program, we believe in a play-based curriculum and a developmental approach to learning and that parents are partners to their child's education. So play-based, what we do is we believe in play-based education. So we create activities, we do fun games, learning stories and things where the children are actually learning a lot of the skills that we would like them to learn while they're playing. Many of the times while they're doing these things, they don't even realize what they're learning along the way. So they're really learning more while they're playing. That's the way we believe children should learn best. Um, our next slide is on curriculum. And our curriculum enhances and engages the child's cognitive language, social, emotional, physical, creative, and spiritual development by integrating the content, our content into different learning centers throughout the classroom. Um, for our daily schedule, we do um, try to get in at least one hour of playtime, if not more, in the morning and in the afternoon. And then we have several short, large group times where we do a story, we do calendar, we do weather, we do religion. Um, we're going to do foundations this year where we're looking at the alphabet letters. Um, we'll do music and movement at that time. And then we also put in um, some second step, which is social skills that we work with the kids on as well at that time. For specials, um, most 3K and 4K classes will get music and Spanish once a week. And then for 4K, we will do mass um, once or twice a month, but we start that in January after we've gotten through the um, <laughs> how to walk in a line and get where we need to go, <laughs> the basics of that. We practice the developmental approach. Lots of people don't know what the developmental approach is. What it is is that we understand that all kids develop at their own rate. Just because they're three years old or four year old doesn't mean that they all know and can do the same things that the rest of their class can do. So it is our goal to get to know each of the children individually and well enough that we learn what skill level they're at in each of the different areas then what we do is we will change those different activities to meet the different levels of each child. So one child might know the basic shapes. So for those children, what we would do is introduce them to more complex shapes to increase what they know. Letters, some children are just starting to learn the letters in the name, while other children might know all the letters of the alphabet. For those children, we would start to work on the sounds of letters. Um, one thing that they do in the 4K program is we work on Wilson Foundations, and that is is a program that carries up into the upper grades as well. Um, with that, we learn the different ways and the different sounds that the letters make. Um, we do practice that. We also um, expose that to the 3K program, but it's not expected of those children to know those until, to know, what was it that we, for the um, Wilson Foundations. They don't need to know all the sounds and they work on it more as they get into kindergarten, but we, Yep, we do just introduce them to it and make sure that they are exposed to those um, concepts so they are ready when they get into kindergarten and they've already got um, an introduction to that. Our next one is parents as partners. So parent involvement is a vital element in the quality and effectiveness of an early childhood program. Um, parents offer a wealth of talents, expertise, and support for the children, teachers, and the school in general. And you guys can become involved in your child's education two ways. You can do it in the classroom or at home. So in the classroom, we just listed some things that you could do. You could assist teachers with center activities. You could chaperone field trips. 
Um, we do have library where we ask parents to come in and just read a story on Mondays. So you can read a story to the children. You could share your talents, hobbies, career, language, or culture with us. Um, you could organize our book orders and send them out. That would be great. Um, or you can send in a snack. We do ask for snacks in the morning, which is a later slide as well. Um, if you're working and you're at home, you could cut or col cut out or color instructional materials for us. Um, if you're good with woodworking, we could build us some things. You know, we always have a wish list, so I'm sure we could come up with something for you to build for us. Um, you, if you're good with a sewing machine, you could um, make us some dramatic clothes or puppets or bean bags. I'm sure we'd come up with stuff for that as well. Or when you're going through your house, if you want to donate unwanted toys, puzzles, or games, we're up for that as well. And books. And books. Um, this was new last year. Just. Um, for preschool only families, so if you only have kids in the preschool, you're expected to volunteer a minimum of five hours for the school. If you have kids upstairs, so you're a family at St. Bernard, then you're, it's just part of the 15 hours that you're expected upstairs. With all that being said, we do like volunteers. If you are planning to come in and volunteer with children, so that would be a field trip or in the classroom, um, this is through the diocese. We do ask you to do three different steps. Everyone in the school would have to do it if they want to, to go on a field trip and things like that. So you have to attend a one hour, a one time three hour training session. Once you attend it, you're good for all eight, nine years that you're here. Complete a background check um, and that you can just do online at home. And then once, usually at the class, they'll give you the diocesan code of conduct to sign. And if they don't, we will track you down and have you sign it. It's just a paper you read and you sign. Um, so just do those three things. I believe in your pat folder, there's inf a, a diagram chart that you guys can look at and gives you all the information on how to do it. And there's also in there the upcoming Virtues classes that you can take. And this is a step that we have put into place as a school um, in order to guarantee the safety of your children. So, you know, when you do want to help in the classroom, you do have to have these three things done. As teachers, we will tell you, I'm sorry, you can't be in our classroom if you haven't had it done, but we really hate to have to do that. So please do take the course if you'd like to come and help in the school. Um, my turn, parent teacher communication. Okay, so, um, we have regular communications with parents. It's, it's imperative. It's important for us to communicate between each other. Children connect differently between home and school. Um, and it's good for you to know kind of what's happening in your child's classroom. Um, ways that we communicate with you, um, we do weekly classroom newsletters. Um, depending on the teacher, this might be um, a email, emailed newsletter. Sometimes it can be a hard copy new newsletter. And I know right now we are actually looking into a new app that we can actually have you sign in to just check things regularly. Um, we're working on that though. Um, we also have whiteboards outside of each classroom. So each day we'll write little notes about the activities that we did in our class, maybe a story that we read or something fun that we did today, just so you have something you can discuss with your child and say, oh, well, did you enjoy this activity each day? Um, every teacher has an inbox in the classroom. If if you have notes about who is picking up your child or um, you're turning in a field trip form or anything like that, any form of communication can be put into those inboxes in the morning when your child comes to school. Um, and then you will also receive what's called a Tuesday take home folder. Um, this folder contains school wide information. Some of it might not pertain to you and some of it will. It's really for you to understand what's going on in our whole community. Um, so when you re you'll receive that Tuesday take home envelope in your child's cubby on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on when you're your children attend um, if you take the contents out and please return that envelope the following day because if we don't get your envelope back you will not get the following week's information. Uh, safety so we ask that parents closely supervise their children especially in the parking lot in the hallway and other places this of the school um, and we're asking that you walk your children downstairs to the classroom if you're able um, and then stay with your child until the classroom door opens don't just leave them in the hallway downstairs. Um, we're, we ask that you use the elevator only in the case of emergencies, in the case of like if you're carrying heavy items or preschool children. Um, with that being said, you do need a badge to get the elevator to work from the upstairs to the downstairs, so then we're getting the secretaries to get you to come downstairs, so please only use that if you necessarily have to. And then be aware that downstairs there are some emergency buttons um, in the whole area downstairs. I think there's like two fire alarms and two other emergency buttons. We do not want a fire drill in the first day of school. <laughs> 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 Just telling you. 
Um, so just watch as, as you're waiting with your kids so they don't accidentally pull a button. And if you do take the elevator, there are emergency buttons in the elevator. So if they accidentally push one of those buttons, please stay in there and talk to the people so they don't come here as an emergency. Yeah, unfortunately, if they do come, there is a $500 fine for pushing that button. So another great reason to use the stairs. <laughs> If you have children, um, if you're volunteering in our classroom, we do ask that you sign in in the main office so we just so everyone knows who's in the building for the day. And then they'll give you a little tag that says I'm a volunteer. And then if you have children that are upstairs eating lunch when your children are done with school or something like that and you're going upstairs, then also please stop in the office and sign in as well. If, if it's like a pickup thing, don't just sneak in a different door. We want to know that you're in the building. And many times too, when it's your child's first year in school, sometimes even when it's their second year in school, in the beginning of the year it can be really hard to say goodbye, um, which is another reason why we are letting you know, make sure you wait until the door's open to get your child inside the door. It might be hard to leave your child, but please, by all means, if your child is crying, it's okay, we have the extra hands on. It's better to say goodbye to your child, not to leave without saying goodbye. And if you linger in the hallway, they're always gonna wonder if you are still out there. So it's best to say goodbye and, and go so they know you'll be back when school is over. Oh, morning drop-off, that's my turn. Okay, so there is, in your handbook that everybody should have received, there is a diagram of how morning drop-off works in the parking lot. It's on page five. So when you are dropping off your children in the morning, please enter the parking lot from Wayfair Way, Way um, and then follow the cars through the parking lot. Um, the older kids get dropped off in a line. You are welcome to park along the back fence of the big parking lot or um, in the smaller parking lot when you bring your students in. Just make sure you're very careful when you're crossing that traffic line with your little children because there is a lot going on in the morning. Um, Door security, our upper doors, at the preschool upper doors um, will open at 820 and then you can come downstairs and wait in the hallway until the classroom doors open. The classroom doors will open at 825 as class starts at 830. Um, like Rachel said, please walk your children downstairs. Don't drop them off at the top or ask um, another child to walk them down so that way you know they are safely in our care before you say goodbye. Um, bus students will gather outside by the flagpole. We have an eighth grade helper that will meet the students from the bus and will stay with them as they wait at the flagpole until it's time to come inside. They will bring them downstairs um, as um, as a group, so they are they are never alone. Yep. In the beginning, we always have extra people in the beginning until they understand and learn the routine. Okay. And then at pickup time, so if your student is a half day student, um, class ends at 11:30 this year. So I know some of you have been here before, but this year, if your child gets done at half days, you're going to wait upstairs at the upper doors, and your students will be walked upstairs to meet you at the end of the day. So please wait for them upstairs. If your child stays for the full day, um, please the doors will upstairs will be unlocked like they are in the morning. Um, you come downstairs and please wait in the hallway until one of our students opens the door and welcomes you in for the end of the day. The classroom doors will open at 325, so you have time to collect your children, um, their belongings, and if you have an older child upstairs, you have time to get upstairs before they are released as well. Uh, if you need before or after school care for your child, that is available for preschool students as well. Um, there should be a table out in the hallway with before and after school care and they'll have a packet and stuff for you as well. I think care starts at 645. I could be wrong. Is it 645? 645. 645. Um, and then they will get them down to us. They'll walk them down to us at 825, 830. Um, and then after school care is right away at 3.30 and I believe it ends at 5.30. And one of the aftercare um, employees or staff will come down to our classrooms. Eighth oh, eighth grade helper, that's right, we just switched that. So an eighth grade helper will, will line up the students going to after school care and will walk them upstairs to the staff at after school care. Um, late pickup, and we understand if events happen and you're, gonna, and you're stuck in traffic or there's a train, but please call so we know that you're on your way. Um, we want to make your child gets nervous if you're late and you're not there when the door opens. So then we can say, nope, they're just stuck in traffic. Blah blah. You know, we can we can read them a story and we know that you're on your way. That'd be great. Um, if it becomes a habit and you're late often, like after the second incident of being late, we're going to ask you to sign up for before and after school care because then we can we have meetings after school we have to get to some days. So then that way they can just the before and after school care can take them. If your child is sick, please call the school office to let them know. Um, you are welcome to email us as well. Um, your child needs to be 
free of a fever, vomiting, or diarrhea for 24 hours um, before they can return to school. So if your child throws up at 8 o'clock at night, please don't send them to school at 9 o'clock the next morning um, or we end up with a whole lot of kids sick. So um, medication forms. In order for us to administer any kind of med medication to your students, you need to fill out um, a medication form. Um, we have some downstairs, but you can pick those up in the office as well. Now that includes anything from chapstick to you know prescription drugs. If it's prescription, the, they need to be in a bottle with a label on it. Um, all prescriptions and medications are kept out of the reach of children in a lockbox in the classroom. Um, but we, even sunscreen, we can't apply anything to your child without a medication form being filled out. We have parent bulletin boards downstairs and on the parent bulletin board will be a calendar. Um, we're just asking that you sign up as many times as you would like um, for a snack and that would be our AM snack. That way we can get some fresh fruit or vegetables and it's not just always crackers from a box. Um, if your child is an all day student, then the, P, the snack, the on your supply list, they asked for two boxes of snacks. Those are our PM snacks that we use. Um, when you do sign up on the calendar for a snack, then your child would be the snack helper for that day. They kind of set the tables for us and they put the snacks out, so it's their job and their special um, thing to do for the day. Um, if allergies, if your child has an allergy, let your teacher know at Meet the Teacher Night. We'll have green slips out on the paper. Please fill those out. We'll put them in our cupboards so that the aides are aware. They look at it every day. Um, that way we can let the other parents know as well. So last year I had like three peanut allergies, so I just asked for everything to come from a box, um, just so we're aware of what there is. Um, and then birthday treats, it's a school-wide rule that birthday treats, so cake, cookies, cupcakes, all of that is not allowed <laughs> for your child's birthday. So we, we do still sign them up on their birthday as the snack helper, so that will already be on the calendar. So just bring their favorite healthy treat so if they really like apples bring apples we sing to them we we still do the whole thing it's just not a cupcake or a cookie it's a healthy snack and unfortunately if you do send them we have to send them back and that's really hard on the kids so please keep that in mind when sending snacks we do ask that they're healthy snacks too one of my least favorite things to get for a healthy snack is chips so <laughs> i know it can be an easy go-to grab thing but it's really not a healthy snack so Yep, some ideas for healthy snacks would be finger sandwiches, trail mix, fruit, cheese, yogurt, crackers, vegetables, vegetables fruit, cheese and sausage. Um, all students are automatically have a lunch account here at St. Bernard. So if your student is a full day student, they're eating lunch, they automatically have a lunch account. Um, all you have to do is add money to their account. So you can write a check or pay cash. Um, the checks should be made out to Grace and maybe on the memo line put hot lunch so you know what it's for or the office knows what it's for. If it's cash, put it in an envelope and mark your child's name on it and say hot lunch. We'll get, you can turn that into our inbox and we'll get it upstairs for you. Um, I know last year there was sometimes, if you have more than one student here, if your lunch money doesn't get in your account, let us know. Sometimes it gets put in another child's account. So just let us know. One of your children's accounts yeah. versus split between right. two or three children. So, so just let us know and we'll investigate that as well. And then there's also, I'll just say, there's a red mailbox outside the main office too. So if you happen to be here before and after hours, if you want to drop off any payments, you can put that in the red mailbox that's right outside the main mm -hmm. office. Yeah. Um, and then money for that lunch account is to purchase hot lunch, um, you can purchase just a milk if you have cold lunch, um, stuff like that. And then hot lunch menus, if you're wondering what's for lunch that day, is on the Nutrislice app, right? Yep. You download the Nutrislice app, you pick St. Bernard School, and it will tell you what's for lunch every day. The only time that it's off is if school would be canceled um, for the day. Sometimes then the lunch menu does get... Um, shifted and it doesn't always show up on that Nutrislice app. So, okay, rest time. Rest time can be challenging for some kids, and we always have parents ask, "Does my child need to take a nap?" We are mandated by the state for children who are in school for more than four hours to have a rest period. Um, so, what we do is, it's basically right after lunch, we get the kids to use the bathroom as they are laying down for rest. Um, each child will have a rest mat or should be bringing a rest mat. It's on the school supply list that will stay at school and will label it for just your child. Um, they can also bring a small blanket, a small pillow, or a special friend to school for rest time. Though, um, in some of the classrooms, children have to share cubbies, so those do have to go home every day. 
um, and they can come back each day that your child is in school. Um, if your child has problems sleeping at night because of rest time, please do let us know. A lot of times the kids will sleep and we often let them sleep until they wake up on their own until it gets to a later time. If your child has a hard time falling asleep at night, just let us know and we can make sure that we wake them up by the time rest time ends at one o'clock or you know, if there's a spe specific time, if you'd like them awake by 1.30, we can, we can suit those needs. So just let us know. Um, we also do busy bags. We, what busy bags are is we have little bags that contain quiet objects or activities that kids can do while they're on the rest mats. We don't start that right away in the beginning of the year because we want the children to learn the routine of our rest time and it helps us to learn which children actually do need that rest and which ones don't actually rest at rest time. As we start to get the routine settled in and we start to recognize which children are resters and which ones are not, we get to the 30 minute mark of rest time and we will give those children busy bags if they are still awake to keep them occupied quietly in their space so the people who are resting aren't disturbed. <coughs> Dress code and attire. Okay, at school we do a lot of fun things. We like to get messy, we have sensory bins, we do lots of painting. So it's good to send your kids in play clothes. They do not need to wear their nicest, best clothes. Um, we do not follow the dress code that they do upstairs with the uniforms. Um, however, we do ask that when you send your preschooler to school that we do follow some of those dress codes that we have set for the Thrill School. That would include um, when your child comes to school, we ask that they're not coming to school wearing spaghetti straps or anything um, where they're, they're revealed a lot. So we look for um, cap sleeves or half sleeves or three-quarter sleeves, long sleeves, things like that. Um, we ask for girls to wear leggings, shorts, or um, tights underneath their dresses. Um, also, we do a lot of running around. Sometimes we go to the gym, we go to the playground. Kids are climbing, running, jumping, having fun. So we ask that your child wears clothes-toed shoes or athletic shoes um, or boots of any sorts, but we ask that you don't send your children to school in Crocs and flip-flops because they can easily flip off and can lead to injuries more often. So we just ask that you keep those for at home. Um, and have your children wear socks <laughs> to school, please, as well. Um, it's a good thing to pack your children with an extra sweatshirt or a light jacket to wear at school. Um, it can be kind of a weird situation downstairs. When it's hot outside, it often gets cold downstairs with the air conditioning being on, so the kids like to have a sweatshirt if they get cold. In the winter time, um, it gets really hot downstairs. <laughs> so when it's cold outside, it's hot downstairs. When it's hot outside, it's cold downstairs. So it's always nice to send them with an extra, an extra layer that they can take off or put on um, when they feel that way. Um, winter gear, during the winter, every child needs to have um, their winter gear. That's snow pants, coat, hat, mittens, um, and boots. If your child does not have winter gear and it's there's snow outside on the ground, they cannot go outside to play. So we would hate for anybody to lose out on that activity. Another thing that we ask you to do that really helps us out is to label all of your children's gear. It can be really chaotic when you have 19 three-year-olds or 24 four-year-olds taking off all of their snow gear at one time, plopping it on the floor. And if you ask them whose snow pants are these, nobody's gonna know. So we just ask you for you to please label them so we can make sure that they get back to the right kid. Um, and extra clothes. Um, accidents happen in preschool and that's to be expected. Um, we do have extra clothes in the basement, however, children are always more comfortable wearing their own clothes. We will send home a bag for you to put extra clothes in to keep in their backpack as they come to school every day. So if they would have an accident, they would spill on themselves or anything like that, we can have them change into their own, clo their own clothes and we will put their soiled clothes or their wet clothes in a bag to send home in their backpacks for you. Field trips, we try to take two to four field trips per school year. Um, we have one already set up for the apple orchard pumpkin patch combined. Um, when is, do you know the date? No, I can't. Okay. I think it's the end of September, beginning of October. Just, we'll get it out to you. We'll get it out to you as soon as we can, because we do like to have parents come along and help chaperone on those as well. The cost for those field trips are covered under your activity fees, so we're not asking you to pay any money for them. And all, this year, due to the low enrollment numbers on Tuesday, Thursday, we're going to take all of our field trips on Mondays or Wednesdays, so the Tuesday, Thursday, a uh, three-year-old class is definitely invited to come. You get an extra day that week, come along. It's just more cost effective for us to do it that way, um, to have our field trip on Mondays and Wednesdays. So we'll schedule all of them on Mondays or Wednesdays. 
And then if you are planning on coming, chaperones must be virtues trained and background checked before um, you go on the field trip. And I just let you know it takes two to three days to get your background checked approved. Don't do it the night before. <laughs> All right, you, everybody should have received a supply list, um, so please bring those items to school as soon as you can, um, the first day or shortly thereafter, if possible. Um, each child should bring a backpack every day to bring the things that they've made at school or communication information home. Um, please do not send your child to school with any toys from home. Um, they where we don't want them to get lost, broken, or become a distraction to others in the classroom. There is, however, Every child has a set show and share day once a month in our classrooms. They'll be part of a group. On those days, they may bring a toy or anything they would like to share with their class from home. However, we do ask that it is not a violent toy. It doesn't contain guns or weapons of any sort, please. Um, and then also, um, no chewing gum at school, please. Um, getting close to the end, at the end of your Preschool handbook, there's a blue piece of paper, so that's just an acknowledgement form. So take your handbook home, kind of read through it. We summed up the big parts of it, but there's other things in there as well. So read through the whole thing, and then we're just asking that both parents sign the last form, and then you can return it to your teacher that first week of school. Um, and if you do need a second copy of the, of the handbook or a copy of it in Spanish, let us know we have extras on the side. And then we just want to thank you all again for coming tonight. We really appreciate that you took the time to stop in and hear how things work downstairs in preschool. If you guys have any questions at any time, please feel free to come and talk to us now or contact us at any time and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks again. And I'm just going to introduce myself. Um, I'm Crystal Blonick. I'm the principal here. Um, so I really want to thank all of you for the sacrifice that you're making to send your children to a Catholic school. I know that um, you have other choices, so thank you for choosing us. And I do want to say that these two women are some of the best teachers that I have ever worked with. So your children are in good hands. My own children have been through the program. Um, one of the things that I think that I'm really most proud of is the play-based approach, along with the way that we integrate faith into that as well. Um, in the spring, I don't remember, I was in and out, so I don't know if you mentioned this, but in the spring, the four-year-olds, we actually start bringing them with their big buddies to the church, so they get that experience as well. And I think as parents, what ends up happening is our children start to um, evangelize us. So don't be surprised if your children start saying, you know, I went to the church and I really want to go back there. Um, just because you're a parent here doesn't necessarily mean you have to be here at St. Bernard. If you have another church that the grandparents go to and they want to experience that, we highly encourage that. Um, I just So just be prepared. That, that spirituality piece is something that kind of grows with us as parents as our children are here. Um, and then I just want to um, I just want to say welcome to St. Bernard and there's going to be lots of opportunities for you to ask questions and um, get to know one another and it's a really fun community so welcome welcome to St. Bernard. Bienvenidos a San Bernardo. <laughs>